It goes without saying that Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the most iconic and recognizable video game characters in history. Sadly, what's become almost as well known as a blue blur himself is his tendency to be paired up with an annoying supporting cast, be they friend, enemy, or somewhere in between. While not every supporting Sonic character is a total nuisance, this is definitely a case where we have a lot of material to work with as the abundance of awful Sonic characters has grown consistently and staggeringly. I'm Kifinosi with 1UP Binge, and this is the worst Sonic the Hedgehog characters and why they suck. As is our usual criteria, we're sticking to characters appearing in the Sonic games themselves and not outside sources like cartoons, comics, or anime. Be thankful, Manic, Sonia, Chris, Thorndike, and Antoine, you all dodged a bullet here. With that out of the way, let's speed into our countdown, starting from the best of the bad Sonic characters and working our way up to the worst. At the bottom of our countdown, we have Amy Rose. This might be a controversial choice since Amy was added to the series back when the new Sonic characters were much more welcome. Appearing in Sonic CD, Amy was originally known as Rosie the Rascal and followed Sonic around around until getting captured by Metal Sonic. In these early appearances, we actually really like the character. Rosie the Rascal's name is fun, design is cute, and the concept of giving the hero a love interest who he isn't really interested in was a funny change of pace for a video game hero at the time. However, we personally think that the development Amy has received over the years has been detrimental to her initial charm. On top of receiving a much more generic name and character design, Amy Rose has been consistently one of the most annoying characters to accompany Sonic on his journeys. Her playable segments in the first Sonic Adventure game were slow and monotonous, not the type of gameplay suited for a series based around speed. Amy does occasionally wield a large hammer, which is kind of cool, but it's not a good sign when a character's weapon is more appealing than the person who's using it. We personally would be happier to see Rosie the Rascal make a comeback than we would to see Amy Rose in her current form again. Flying her way into the next spot, we're taking a look at Cream the Rabbit. Making her debut appearance in Sonic Advance 2, Cream essentially served as the female equivalent to Tails, being gifted the ability to fly using her long ears. She's often accompanied by her flying chow for friend Cheese, who is kind of adorable, so we won't put him on the list. Cream is pretty low on our countdown because she's not really an annoying character so much as she's really bland and boring. She's well-mannered, kind, and pure-hearted, so there's not a whole lot to really hate about her. With that said, Cream hasn't received much development within the Sonic series to move on from those very basic personality traits. This has really made Cream come across as a character who more often than not is there for the sake of just being there in most games, until Team Sonic gives us a reason to care about her. Cream lands on the lower end of our countdown. Next, we have Silver the Hedgehog. It's no secret that Sonic fans and Silver got off on the wrong foot with Silver first appearing in the infamous Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Hailing from the future, Silver is a floating hedgehog who has mastered the power of telekinesis, which he uses while fighting Sonic. The reason we don't particularly care for Silver is that we feel his personality offered nothing new to the Sonic universe. Sonic has a hedgehog rival who matches his abilities? Been done with Shadow. Sonic and Silver start off on bad terms due to a misunderstanding, but eventually learn to work together? Been done with Knuckles and Blaze. Oh, what about the uh, the concept of Silver's backstory involves time travel? Oh yeah, Sonic CD anyone? We won't act like Silver has the most annoying or insufferable personality, which is why he still ranks somewhat low. However, instead of being a compelling character, Silver leaves us scratching our heads and wondering, what's the point? Shooting up the next spot is E-102 Gamma. One of Eggman's robots, E-102 Gamma, appeared as a playable character in Sonic Adventure. While initially subservient to his creator, Gamma realizes that he has free will after a conversation with Amy convinces him to change his ways. Throughout the rest of the game, Gamma struggles with his programming as he changes his goals to liberate his fellow robots from Eggman's control. The premise of robots feeling emotions isn't exactly new, and the writing of Sonic Adventure doesn't exactly tackle the concept with the complexity of Isaac Asimov. Beyond that, Gamma's sections in this game set a precedent for Sonic games after it to include shoot-em-up mechanics, which in turn led to really awkward mechanics in both Sonic Adventure 2 and Shadow the Hedgehog. Maybe some people shed a tear over Gamma's eventual demise, but we sure didn't. Advising his way into the next spot is Omo Chow. Appearing initially in Sonic Adventure, Omo Chow is a flying robotic Chow who appears on most levels of the game to give the characters hints. From that point on, Omo Chow has been consistently assigned the role of the designated hint giver in future installments of the series. Omo Chow's hints range from useful to useless, most often the latter, as he tends to explain things the player would have figured out on their own otherwise. This wouldn't be so bad if Omo Chow was triggered by an optional dialogue box, but the annoying pest flies after the player if they so much as 
walk in Omo Chao's general vicinity. The only way to stop Omo Chao's speech is to pick him up and throw him away. This tells us that the Sonic Adventure developers were well aware of Omo Chao's tendency to be annoying and programmed a way into the game to vent said frustration, which I gotta say, I appreciate. However, boarding into the next spot, we have Jet the Hawk, Wave the Swallow, and Storm the Albatross, known collectively as the Babylon Rouges. This group of eccentric birds serves as Sonic's tails and Knuckles' hoverboarding rivals in the Sonic Riders series. While initially appearing as very hostile, the Babylon Rouges have teamed up with Sonic and his cohorts on several occasions, developing a much friendlier rivalry in general. The Babylon Rouges make the list because they're yet another group of annoying, unnecessary Sonic characters that are just completely ridiculous. This trio looks like they were left on the cutting room floor of Sonic Heroes and brought back up when Sonic Riders started development. The designs of these characters aren't even interesting nor original. Their leader, Jet, looks like a ripoff of Bean the Dynamite, who in himself looks like he took cues from Plucky Duck. Sonic and friends have saved many birds from the clutches of Dr. Eggman, but if those birds grew up to be the Babylon Rouges, I don't know, maybe that was a mistake. Up next, we have a double ranking with Vector the Crocodile and Charmy B. We were tempted to put the Chaotix team as a whole on here, but really the other two members don't bother us too much. Espio the Chameleon is kind of cool and Mighty the Armadillo hasn't appeared enough to really get on anyone's nerves. Vector and Charmy, on the other hand, are incredibly grating and bring down Team Chaotix as a whole. In fact, while Espio tends to take his job as a detective very seriously, Vector is extremely easygoing. Not a bad trait in of itself, but not a great one for a detective who should be hyper-focused. Charmy is even worse as the scatterbrained, hyperactive child of the group who makes the Honey Nut Cheerios bee look like a freaking badass by comparison. We're willing to bet that the shenanigans of Charmy and Vector are what led to Team Chaotix being absent from the series for many years. Had the detective agency been instead run by Mighty and Espio, we're willing to bet that their business would be doing gangbusters. In the hands of Charmy and Vector, it does not. Fighting their way into the next spot, we have another double whammy with Bean the Dynamite and Bark the Polar Bear. Believe it or not, there was once a time where the Sonic universe had so few characters to choose from, the developers felt it necessary to create new ones to fill up the roster of a fighting game. Thus, in the 1996 game Sonic the Fighters, we were introduced to the Sega equivalents of Waluigi, Bean and Bark. Bean is an adult plucky duck look-alike who specializes in throwing bombs at his opponents, while Bark is a big, dumb bear with boxing gloves. Not exactly the most inspired creations. While we said the developers felt it necessary to add Bean and Bark to the character roster, in actuality, it wasn't. It wasn't necessary. Espio appears among the main cast, so it would have made plenty of sense for Mighty and even Vector to be used as characters as opposed to Bean and Bark. We were tempted to include Honey the Cat in this spot as well, but that character was cut from the original release of Sonic the Fighters. She was included in the 2012 remake of the game, giving her some novelty as cut content. If Bean and Bark met the same fate, then we might be singing a different tune right now. Now let's take a look at the most recent characters to grace our list, the Deadly Six. The antagonists of Sonic Lost World, the Deadly Six is a group of demons named Zavik, Zaz, Xena, Master, Zik, Zomom, and Zor. Eggman initially intends to use them to defeat Sonic, but the Deadly Six eventually toss the Doctor to the side in order to destroy the world. The Deadly Six are essentially Sonic Lost World's answer to the Koopalings, except much less memorable and entertaining. While their designs are kind of fun, they don't fit the aesthetic of the Sonic universe and look much more like background characters that you'd find in the Hotel Transylvania films. As they stand, the Deadly Six are odd, out of place, and not that memorable, so we're willing to bet that we won't be seeing them again anytime soon. Swinging his way into the next spot is Caliburn from Sonic and the Black Knight. After the concept of giving hedgehogs weapons went over so well in Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic Team decided to go the extra mile and give Sonic not only a weapon, but a sentient talking sword whom he fights with in medieval times. This sword, Caliburn, takes things much more seriously than the Carefree Sonic, leading to them getting into a lot of bickering, and oh, I feel ridiculous explaining this. Seriously, who thought this was a good idea? Who? Even if you wanted to suspend your disbelief enough to believe Sonic would use a sword for some reason, why make the sword? This ridiculous reject from Pee Wee Herman's tool shed. The fact Caliburn doesn't even make the bottom five goes to show how much the Sonic characters have fallen from grace. For now, let's just hope we don't see any sentient throwing knives or switch blades appear in any future Sonic games. Visiting from the future, next up we have Eggman Nega. A descendant of the Eggman we all know and love, Eggman Nega traveled from 200 years in the future in order to help Eggman triumph over Sonic and destroy the world. This makes no sense on so many levels. First off, why would Eggman Nega care or even be aware of the fact that his ancestor repeatedly kept losing to a blue hedgehog? Secondly, if he wanted to destroy the world, why not go back to before Sonic was born to do that? Thirdly, destroying the planet would inevitably destroy the future, aka where Eggman Nega resides, thus rendering him non-existent? We could keep going with more reasons, but I think you get the point. On top of that, Eggman Nega is such a lazy villain whose design and personality stick way too closely to Eggman. I guess the egg doesn't fall too far from the tree, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
<laughs> but if you're going to introduce a new villain, do us a favor and actually make it something we haven't seen before instead of this prepackaged crap. Next up, we have Solaris, narrowly missing out on the bottom three. It seems every character introduced to the Sonic series via time travel leads to disastrous results, and Solaris is no exception. Appearing in Sonic 06, need we say more, Solaris is the sun god of Soliana, who was split into two halves, those being Mephiles the Dark and Iblis. Since they stem from the mind of Solaris, we're putting him as the entry to represent all three forms. Solaris is a great example of how a villain can overcomplicate a series to the point of it not even resembling its roots. Remember when Sonic was about a hedgehog who ran fast and saved animals? Now, it's about a time-traveling sun god who murders Sonic before being retconned and erased from existence. In fact, the way this game completely obliterates Solaris' existence is the only reason he doesn't land in the bottom three. If only Sonic 06 could obliterate its own existence as well as the memories anyone has of playing it, then we're in business. The bronze medal for worst Sonic character is going to the infamous Big the Cat. We're willing to bet this is the first character that comes to most people's minds whenever the phrase bad Sonic characters is brought up. First appearing in Sonic Adventure, Big the Cat added variety to the Sonic universe that absolutely no one asked for. Even before the series was criticized for its overabundance of characters, many people took one look at the concept of fishing in a Sonic game and rightfully became very confused. Big himself is dopey, laid back, and simple-minded, which could have worked in the right context, but just not this one. Had fishing been a minigame in Sonic Adventure like it was in Ocarina of Time, we doubt anyone would have been that mad at Big. But since the game forces you to play through his storyline in order to reach the main ending, there was no way around Big's monotonous gameplay. We're ranking Big so high not only because of his personality and role in Sonic Adventure, but because he basically became the catalyst for adding unnecessary gameplay to many of the Sonic games that followed. As such, Big the Cat may have been the most detrimental character to the series itself, and that's saying a lot. Narrowly avoiding the top spot, the silver medal for worst Sonic character is awarded to Princess Elise the Third. Sonic 06 has become the punching bag of the series over the years, both for its glitchy, unfinished gameplay and its bafflingly awful story. The latter is often attributed to the character of Elise, particularly due to her relationship with Sonic. The concept of a human having this kind of relationship with an anthropomorphic animal may be acceptable at furry conventions, but it has some strange connotations when used as the plotline for a popular video game series. Some have even gone as far as to say Sega is promoting bestiality with this decision. I'm not saying that's true, I'm, I'm just saying that's what's been put out there. Beyond the initial cringe factor of the relationship, Elise herself is a boring goody two-shoes character who makes Cream look complex by comparison. She's boring, annoying, creepy, unnecessary, and out of place. All of which are the traits that comprise every terrible Sonic character rolled into one. After much heated debate, we're giving the gold medal for worst Sonic character ever to Tails Doll. Sonic the Fighters wasn't the only game to create random, unnecessary characters to fill out a character roster, as the same thing also happened during the development of Sonic R. Since Dr. Eggman had created a robotic version of Sonic, I guess it made sense for him to also have a robotic version of Tails and Knuckles. This is why we aren't putting Metal Knuckles even on this list, as while it's somewhat unnecessary, at least that character's design was kind of cool and made sense. Tails Doll, on the other hand, has to be one of the worst designs for anything in history. On top of being ugly and creepy looking, Tails Doll essentially flies around doing nothing, like a levitating stuffed toy controlled by a remote. Eggman has made some enemies with questionable designs, but with Tails Doll, we think the good doctor may have received some slight trauma to the head. Tails Doll has found a resurgence on the internet, with some people finding him creepy and others finding him funny, but we're not about to let it off the hook solely because it inspired some creepypastas. On its own merits, Tails Doll still stands as one of the worst things to ever be put into a video game. But let us know in the comments section which Sonic character you think is the worst. And if you need a one-up, make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other Sonic the Hedgehog videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.